Shoveling snow in my church a few days ago, and there's right next to a bakery, and then there was just an overwhelming scent of bagels. It was driving me nuts. I should have, but I didn't. Huh. Yes. No, but it's your favorite bagel. I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's just the thing. It, there are some bagels that are bad. There are a few bagels that are bad. And you can improperly make a bagel. But bagels are a universal good. It's like, it's like when you combine two of my favorite things, empty carbohydrates with things that have sugar in them. All right, so, um, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, to lecture. Uh, for those of you on the video, um, I could not divide 5 by 20 correctly, so this is actually 0.25, which means the power consumption ends up coming out to be 1.25 watts. Um, yeah, I, I can't do simple math, and I'm going to teach you calculus. All right, um, now we're going to go ahead and take this concept and we're gonna go ahead and make this a little bit more interesting, so to speak, okay? I'm gonna give you a harder problem. A single power system with a single resistor, this is an easy problem, okay? Um, I would hope that if I gave you this exact problem again, you could do it just changing numbers. So slightly more challenging system now, and I'm gonna use the word slightly. Um, I'm gonna use that word a little bit uh, loosely, is that here now we have three resistors in the system, okay, R1. We're going to say R1 is equal to uh, 60 ohms. We're going to say R2 is equal to 40 ohms. And we're going to say R3 is equal to 20 ohms. OK? There's ohms for everyone. All right, now since we're good at designing things, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start numbering the nodes. One, two, three, four. How many loops do we have in this system? One, which makes it pretty easy, L1. We're in a good place. I can't stop smelling spaghetti. This is driving me nuts. Nope, it's gone. I really want spaghetti now. All right, so the question is, once again, what is the power coming out of the source? And you know what? I'm gonna ask a different question too, just for the sake of asking questions. What is the power being consumed by R4? So two questions, two answers, one fun adventure in the world of circuits. That's an R4. All right, so um, I mean, you could set up this problem by looking at what we need to find out and then doing exactly what we did last time. So let's do that. What's the power equation? P equals VI. So we know PS equals VS IS. And we also know that we're also asking about power for R4, so we'll use the same equation, just different subscripts. P R4 equals VR4, I, R4. I'm actually gonna use a lowercase i. Mm. 
Okay, what was the next step that we did in the last problem? We start with KVL or KCL, one of two. We'll start with KVL just because <sighs> Igor suggested it. KVL. Go. Words. Math. What do I write? And that's equal to? Vs. Vs. So our input equals our output voltage. OK. Do we have any other equations for KVL? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. No, OK. All right, so now we'll do KCL. What do I write for KCL? All the nodes. You're going to make me do all the work by myself, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I miss having you guys in class. You guys have always been lively. Uh, you know what? Yeah. So I source comes in. What's going out is? IR1. Okay, that's node one. Node two, what comes in? IR1 equals IR2, because that's what's going out. Node three, coming in is IR2, going out is IR3, so we have IR2 equals IR3. Node four, IR3 equals IS. So a whole lot of equations. We can combine all of those. Every one of our components in this system has the same current. Which means, are they in parallel or series? All of them are in series, OK? Everything is series. This is the world series here. <laughs> Am I not allowed to make baseball jokes? Go ahead. Okay. That was the only one I had. <laughs> it was not a home run. <sighs> okay. Um, so what we want to know here is we do not know VR4. We do not know IR4. We do not know IS. After writing these equations, we do know we don't have an R4. Let's make this three. See, I need you guys to keep me honest, because otherwise I start writing weird stuff. Uh, we don't know what R4 is. Why? Because there is no R4. Um, we don't know what VR3 is. We don't know what IR3 is. We don't know what IS is. However, we do know that R3, IR3 is equal to IS. Well, is equal to IR2, is equal to IR1. It's all the same current, OK? So we all have the same currents here. We have this voltage equation. Um, and then we have one other equation we can use from our toolbox. Henrik, what is it? Ohm's law. Yes. Yep. Sorry, you're my Ohm's law guy for today. Uh, we can use Ohm's law. And we can use Ohm's law three different times because we have three different resistors. Ohm's law is useful for linking voltage and current inside of those components. OK? So um, all right. 
I am going to do something unconventional. I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to start messing with it. Okay? I guess before that, I'll write out my component equations just so that we can have all of our equations on the board. So we know VR1 equals IR1, R1, VR2 equals IR2, R2, and VR3 equals IR3, R3. All of those are Ohm's law, every one of them. That's, I just changed the ones into twos, and then the twos into threes. Um, okay, this is all the equations we have. There are no more equations. We can solve the problem. We have, we have uh, eight equations there. We can solve the problem in eight equations. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, this is the only equation that gives us anything really substantial. This is, this is it. So I'm going to take that equation, okay, and things are going to get funky. I'm going to go ahead and take this equation, this equation, and this equation, and plug them in up here. All right, so starting with KVL loop one, I'm just going to rewrite the equation, VR1 plus VR2 plus VR3 equals VS, okay? Nothing has changed. Everything is the same. Now, I'm going to replace VR1, VR2, VR3 with these, which are the component equations. We can do that because we know that they're equal. So this becomes IR1, R1, plus IR2, R2, plus IR3, R3, equals VS. Did that help us? You say yes, but that's one of those like, how? I know it did, because we're doing math, but how does that help us? D does anybody see what we can do next with this? Any guesses? Yeah? Since all the currents are equal, you can uh, substitute IS for all of them. Ah, awesome. Yes, and that was actually the exact step I was going to take. Nice work. We're going to go ahead and take these currents and we're going to make them IS. Okay? Why? Because IR1 equals IS. IR2 is equal to IR1, which happens to also be equal to IS. IR3 is equal to IR2, which happens to also be equal to IS. So, we can change all of these to IS. Why are we making it IS? Well, we could have made it IR3. We could have made it IR2. We could have made it anything. But I like to, what, what, what I like to do when I solve a circuit is take all the components, kind of look at the circuit this way, come back, figure out the battery, and then go back and figure out the circuit, okay? Um, I don't know if that's backwards and I don't know if that helps, but that's, that tends to be how I do it because I like to see what is the battery doing? What is the power source doing? I want to know that first. Uh, that matters most to me. And then we can go back and look at everything else later. All right, so IS times R1 plus IS times R2 plus IS times R3 equals VS. How many unknowns do we have in that equation? Huh? Which one? This is the only one we don't know. We can't quite substitute yet. This is the only one we don't know. You can call this I. You can call it, you can call it uh, J if you really wanted to. This one variable represents the current that is flowing through loop one. This is a current that goes from the battery, comes out of this positive terminal of battery, goes through this resistor, goes through this resistor, goes through this resistor, and then goes and finds a home in the other side of the battery. Okay? It's some value. We're calling it IS. We're, they're all equal to each other. That's what we're looking for right now. We know all of this is true. We have one unknown, 
everything else is known, which means we can solve for this, which means you end up with IS R1 plus R2 plus R3 equals VS. I just simplified the equation a little bit. You pull an IS out of each one of these, it becomes R1 plus R2 plus R3, which means IS is equal to VS divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay? Have I lost anybody yet? It's just simple algebra here. But it is easy to get lost because this is a whole friggin' lot of math. I, uh, Vs is equal to 12. By the way, I did this specifically so that I would not have to make a mistake on the board. 60 plus 40 plus 20 is equal to 120, assuming I can do math in my head, which I have already failed out once today. <laughs> And so we know that IS is equal to 12 divided by 120, which is equal to 0 0.1 amps. Now, we can take IS, we can solve this equation directly. We already know what VS is. Awesome. Kcha. Solving. PS is equal to VS. IS is equal to what's VS? 12. What is IS? 0.1 amp. So which means PS is equal to 1.2. And what is the unit? <laughs> what? <laughs> See, you get it. <laughs> All right, we're not done with this problem yet. Do we know what VR3 is? What is it? Is it written on the board? I wrote VR3 up here. Oh, we wrote it up here too. And then we lost it. Oh, and I wrote it down here too. But at no place do we have a VR3 equals 10 watts, 10 volts, 30 millinewtons. Okay, we don't have VR3 equals anything which means we don't know what this is. Do we know what IR3 is? What? It is equal to IS, so we do know what this is. You can go ahead and write that one in there. All of these components in series are they gonna have the same voltage? Is everything gonna be at 12 volts? Well, if everything was 12 volts, then this would be 12 plus 12 plus 12 equals 12. And well, that doesn't work. This is a good thought. We do know that all of them are gonna add up to 12. All right, I'll stop asking the confusing questions. Do we know what IR3 is? Do we know what R3 is? We know what V3 is, VR3 is. That's all it takes. You have to know two. We know what IR2 is. We know what R2 is. We know two components. We can figure out VR2. We know what IR1 is. We know what R1 is. We can solve for VR1. So because we know those two, give me a little pat there. Um, oh, you're a little good equation. It was a good little equation. <laughs> Um, we're going to go ahead and take that equation. VR3 is equal to IR3, R3. IR3 is equal to IS, which is equal to what? 
is equal to 0 0.1. What is R3? 20 ohms. So this is going to be equal to 2 volts. Okay. Now, when we go back and look at this equation, we have everything we need to know. What is VR3? Huh? Stu, what is IR3? Zero point two watts. Okay, I'll box these answers so that they are a little bit more visible. Ah, done. That was kind of a pain. Let's do it again. Now I am going to over here. Write this equation right here. IS is equal to VS over R1 plus R2 plus R3. Why? Because I can. Okay, now for our next system, I'm used to having more board space than this. We'll say Vs is equal to 12 volts again. This time, we're going to put everything in parallel. And
It's fairly incredible. This entire circuit runs off of a 1.5 volt power supply. Well, I find it fascinating. Yeah. Okay. The video is back. Um, and the audio is back. We're all back. So, and I got a new marker because the other one is currently under that cart. Well, somebody threw it away. Oh, I guess I should probably use it until it dies. Thank you for getting that, by the way. I will leave you for another day. Be a good little marker. All right, so we have two nodes. We want to know once again, what is power coming from the source? And we also want to know what is the power going through R3? Okay, so we start this the same way as we did last time. KVL and KCL. KVL, now we have one loop, two loops, three loops, three wonderful loops. <sighs> Yeah, okay. So in loop one, what? <laughs> oh, loop one, loop two, loop three. What is our equation for loop one? Yep. Our output voltage is equal to our input voltage. What about loop two? What we're doing for our loop is a loop is a, it's like, consider it like a racetrack. If you were a car traveling through this diagram, you want to get back to the starting point somehow. You don't care how far it goes. It's a terrible racetrack. Okay, you start here, go down this path, go here, go back here. How many components did I hit? I hit one, which was that component? So we know VR2 is equal to VS. Okay, loop three, what can we write for that one? Shocker. Nice equations though. All right, so we got that taken care of. Uh, now we have KCL. KCL at node one. What is our current coming into node one? It doesn't matter where I draw one. I just drew one up here in the center. You could draw one here. You draw one here if you really wanted to. The idea is you have power is coming from this direction and it is going downward, cascading downward to the right. So at one, the input current is coming from IS and it is going out to node two. Goes from one to two. Out on its pathway from one to two, it has three different directions it can choose. What are those three choices? Yes, it is. Okay, and then if we write at node two, it'll just be this equation in reverse. Because the inputs to node two, are you have three inputs, one output. Okay. And then we have three component equations. For your component equations, you know VR1 equals IR1, R1, VR2 equals IR2, R2, and 
VR3 is equal to IR3, R3. Those didn't change. That's, that's identical from the last one. Three instances of Ohm's law. I don't even know if you can read that, Solomon, I'm sorry. I don't even know if I can read it, and I'm standing next to it. <sighs> you guys were cursed to have a professor whose handwriting sucks. <laughs> uh, I, write, I write better when I write big. But I have not been writing big, because I only have so much board. Okay. Well, in this instance, we do know what VR3 is. Let's call it a day. I think we're done with class. We learned everything that has to do with this. No, I'm kidding. You still have like 50 minutes. I was lying. I just wanted to get your hopes up just so I could smash them. Oh, uh, yeah. I had to wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning. It turns me into a jerk. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I had to wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning, which is when I walked into the room. That's great. I actually am still not awake. I torture students in my sleep. Um, I'll wake up at around 11, maybe. What are we doing? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're trying to figure out the power in the source and power through R3. We have all of the equations. This is all the equations we can generate out of the system. Okay, just a couple things of Ohm's law, KCL, KPL. Okay, everything else is fun and just derivations of these equations mashed together. We're going to go ahead and start with this equation because it's the longest. Everything else is just one thing equals another thing multiplied by stuff. This one actually has plus signs in it. So we're going to go ahead and pull this one out first. Okay. So at 1, we have IS is equal to IR1 plus IR2 plus IR3. Nothing has changed. Just rewrote that equation. Now going to do exactly what we did for the last one, which is take our component equations. Why am I doing that? Anybody have a guess? A little bit of foresight here. Last time we introduced the component equations, which allowed us to have one unknown variable. Are we going to be able to do that this time? I'm seeing some head nods. Let's go ahead and do it then. IS is equal to IR1 is equal to VR1 divided by R1. I'm just going to go ahead and write that in here. I could rewrite that, but I don't want to. VR2 over R2. VR3 over R3. OK. This does not look like we have one unknown variable. Yep. As she just pointed out, everything is equal to Vs. So we can take these equations, plug them in here. Okay? Using this equation, plugging in these, substituting in these, what we end up with is 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 equal to Vs over R1 plus Vs over R2 plus Vs over R3. If we combine all of those, we end up with Is is equal to Vs times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. We know what Vs is. We know what R1, R2, R3 is. So 
So, I guess let's math. Vs is equal to 12. So 12 over 60. Thank you. What is uh, 12 divided by 40? What is 12 divided by 20? You do that in your head. Yes. Get out of my class. Just get out. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so if we have these all together, IS is equal to 1.1 amp. What does that mean? Well, where in this circuit are we getting 1.1 amp? It's going through here. Between this point right here and this point right here, we have 1.1 amps of current. Okay, now you calculated these three out. I went ahead and wrote them because, by the way, that's IR1. That's IR2. And that's IR3. I don't want to have to do the math again, so let's just write it out now. Okay, which of those is the largest? Which component has the most current flowing through it? IR3. What is what what about IR3 makes it have the highest current? It's VR3 over R3. Right? Which means VR3 is equal to VS, which means the only thing different is that R3 is the smallest resistance. Okay? Be like this, okay? You're going through the lunchroom. There are three lines in the lunchroom. In this line, it takes them like forever to make the food. This line it takes them less forever to make the food. And this line, it only kind of takes them forever to, to make the food. Okay? So um, you're going to have more people that want to go through this line just because, you know, if you sit here and wait in this line, it's just going to take forever. Now you'll have some people that still go through this line. But you'll have more people that go through this line just because it's going faster. There's less resistance. Lower resistance usually means applied for the same voltage means that you're going to have more current flowing through it. Now, which of these is going to have the least amount of power? Now let's figure out power. Why don't we go ahead and calculate PS and PR3. So PS is going to be 12 volts times 1.1 amp. And should I do that right in my head? It's 13.2 watts. So 12 volts times 1.1 amp, 13.2 watts. Okay, PR3, that is going to be, we have IR3, which is 0.6. We have VR3, which is 12. So we have 12 volts times 0 0.6 amps is equal to 7.2 watts. Thank you. Did you do that in your head? OK, thank you. See, she knows how to do it right. Mm-hmm. No. I just said she did it right. No, you did it right. You get out. Did I tell you to get out once? <laughs> uh. I also, also have to be careful in this class because sometimes I tell humor. I always laugh at my own jokes. If I don't laugh at my own jokes, I start crying. 
So if you see me crying, it's because I'm holding in a laugh or because I'm having a really traumatic day. <laughs> Hopefully it's the first and not the second. I'll tell you about my traumatic day. We can all cry together. Um, okay, so PS is 13.2 watts. PR3 is 7.2 watts. You know what, just for poops and giggles, let's do PR2 and PR1. PR2 is equal to the voltage going through. R2 is going to be 12 volts. The current going through R2 is IR2, which is 0.3, which is going to make this 3.6 watts. Okay, and then PR1, that is not a P, is going to be equal to 12 volts times 0 0.2 amps, which is going to, thank you, 2.4 watts. Okay, what happens when you add these three together? What do you get? Thirteen point two. What is significant about the number thirteen point two? The amount of power consumed by the circuit is equal to the amount of power that is output by the circuit by every individual component. Okay? KVL and KCL have to be true because power, which is ultimately energy, has to be conserved. KVL is about energy. KCL is about mass transfer. Both of these together are power. They're derivations of power. Everything comes down to power. All right? This is like the infinity gauntlet of physics. You will not have more power leaving the circuit than coming in. If you do, call me because we need to make money off of this, okay? Uh, we've, we've created an arc reactor. All right. I will give you 10 minutes. I will see you back here at 10.05. Ah, oh, it just sucks. Come on, don't do me wrong. Ah, oh, so good. I'm a huge fan of conservation, but I'm an even bigger fan of writing dark enough that you guys can read it.